Good evening from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're looking live at a view of Launch Pad 40 at uh, neighboring Cape Canaveral Space Force Station where a Falcon 9 rocket is, is set to launch at 6.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 23.11 UTC with an Italian Cosmos SkyMed radar remote sensing satellite. If you've been following our coverage over the last few days, you'll know this is the fifth day in a row that SpaceX has tried to launch this mission Back on uh, Thursday evening, rain showers and cloud cover over the spaceport prevented the launch. Uh, similar story Friday evening with uh, thick clouds. SpaceX uh, tried again to launch on Saturday. However, high winds in the area prevented uh, some pre-launch operations from being completed early in the day Saturday. So SpaceX uh, called off that attempt. And then last night, a cruise ship in the launch hazard area from uh, Royal Caribbean ventured into uh, restricted waters in the Atlantic Ocean offshore of uh, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station that forced uh, the range to call a red condition and ended up scrubbing yesterday's launch attempt despite ideal weather. Tonight, similar weather, good uh, clear skies overhead. SpaceX uh, now one hour and six minutes from launch time. This is the, again, the fifth day in a row that SpaceX will have launched this mission and will bring you live coverage of the countdown and the one hour climb into orbit for the Falcon 9 rocket and the Italian Cosmos SkyMed second generation radar satellite.
This mission is carrying a uh, Cosmos SkyMed radar surveillance satellite for the Italian Space Agency and the Italian military. This artist concept shows the spacecraft as it will appear in orbit with its solar panels opened. Those uh, blue appendages on each side of that uh, golden spacecraft structure are the solar panels. At the bottom of the image, uh, this artist illustration is the radar antenna array that will uh, unfold uh, after the satellite reaches orbit tonight. That'll unfold within the first 24 out four hours of the mission. That antenna will transmit and receive synthetic aperture radar signals uh, bouncing off of Earth's surface to map uh, different uh, features of Earth's surface, tracking things like uh, ships at sea, oil spills, natural disasters, as well as ice sheets, icebergs, and other uh, objects that change uh, the appearance of Earth's surface on a daily basis. These Cosmos SkyMed satellites, uh, this will be the sixth of these Cosmos SkyMed radar satellites launched into orbit, and together they form a fleet providing uh, regular updated imagery of Earth's surface. The Italian uh, Cosmos SkyMed radar satellite weighs about 2.2 metric tons. That's a little over 4,800 pounds inside the payload fairing of the Falcon 9 rocket. Built by uh, Talas Alenia Space in Europe, uh, this spacecraft is, is designed for a seven-year lifetime. Again, this is a different artist uh, illustration showing how the spacecraft will appear once it's in space with all of its antennas and solar arrays deployed. Those critical deployments um, all occur in the first day of the mission. And then uh, ground controllers in Italy will begin the process of activating the radar instrument to begin calibration and testing. If all goes well, the spacecraft should be ready for service by the second quarter of 2022. Again, this is the sixth Cosmos SkyMed radar satellite that will have launched in this constellation. The first four launched from 2007 to 2010 on United Launch Alliance Delta II rockets from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Italy began developing a, a second generation of, co generation of Cosmos SkyMed satellites to replace that first quartet. The first of this second generation uh, satellites launched back in December 2019 on an Ariane Space Soyuz rocket from the uh, Karoo Space Center down in French Guiana. And this is the second of these second generation sat satellites uh, launching tonight on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from here at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Two, addi two additional Cosmos SkyMed uh, second generation satellites are being constructed now for uh, launches in 2024 on European Vega C rockets from French Guiana.
Now, T minus uh, 59 minutes, just past the T minus 59 minute part point in today's countdown. Again, weather conditions looking very good for launch this evening. Don't expect that to be an issue with the clear skies overhead. Light winds in the area also, uh, Cape Canaveral at this point in time. Good visibility and a temperature of around 60 degrees Fahrenheit currently here at Kennedy Space Center. All those parameters well within the Falcon 9's uh, weather criteria. So uh, the launch tonight is expected to come down to whether the uh, Falcon 9 rocket and the Cosmos SkyMed satellite are ready as they have been the previous uh, four days for a launch opportunity, as well as the uh, Eastern Range being go for launch and the range hazard area being clear of all ships and aircraft, that being the uh, issue that prevented liftoff last night. Again, last night's launch attempt was uh, scrubbed inside of a minute before liftoff due to a Royal Caribbean a cruise ship that ventured into the launch hazard area southeast of Cape Canaveral in the Atlantic Ocean. The uh, Port Canaveral facility uh, is home to several different uh, cruise liners just a few miles to the south of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. So these cruise ships uh, coming and going from Port Canaveral are a, a regular occurrence. However, uh, one of them did veer into the launch hazard area yesterday in the final uh, minutes of the countdown. The uh, Coast Guard and the Space Force attempted to uh, clear the cruise ship out of the area, but uh, they couldn't do that in time for yesterday's instantaneous launch opportunity at 6.11 p.m. A liftoff time tonight is the same time. The launch uh, time does not change day to day. Liftoff targeted for those of you keeping uh, precise notes at 6.11 and 14 seconds p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 23.11 and 14 seconds UTC.
thwarted by a cruise ship that uh, ventured into the launch hazard area southeast of Cape Canaveral. This uh, Royal Caribbean cruise liner uh, was departing uh, Port Canaveral, Florida, just a few miles to the south of the Space Force Station here on the Space Coast. The uh, launch hazard area is uh, visible in this map, showing the uh, restricted waters where uh, ships are uh, not permitted to be during the final countdown and the flight for uh, public safety reasons. This rocket will be heading initially south-southeast off the coast of Cape Canaveral, as uh, seen in this image in this map. Uh, once it clears the coastline after uh, staging, after the first stage is done with its job, the uh, second stage will take over and uh, begin a uh, right-hand yaw maneuver or dogleg to begin steering the rocket uh, on a more southerly course parallel to the east coast of Florida. So these boundaries in this map show uh, where boaters are not permitted to be during the countdown. Uh, any encroachment into these uh, hazard areas uh, could result in a scrub, as it did last night when a uh, cruise liner leaving Port Canaveral did uh, veer into the launch hazard area. Now T minus 48 minutes and 20 seconds. The uh, Launch countdown is heading toward the next major milestone, which is the start of propellant loading at T minus 35 minutes. That'll mark the uh, a key milestone in the countdown. Uh, before that time, SpaceX's launch team will be polled electronically for a go or no go to begin propellant loading, and also a go and no go for launch. That'll be the final pre-launch poll of SpaceX's team at the Launch Control Center at Cape Canaveral. Now T minus 47 minutes and counting. Again, this is a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket. Less than 47 minutes from launch tonight from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The Falcon 9 stands 229 feet tall or 70 meters tall. You're looking at the various components of the Falcon 9 here. The lower two thirds approximately of the launch vehicle is comprised by the first stage. This first stage is powered by nine Merlin engines burning kerosene and liquid oxygen. Well, those nine engines will put out 1.7 million pounds of thrust, almost 200,000 pounds apiece during the first two minutes and 20 seconds of flight. That first stage will be uh, returning to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station for a landing on landing zone one about eight minutes after liftoff. Above uh, that first stage, which has uh, some sooty uh, uh, markings on it from its two previous flights to space, is the black band of the interstage. This uh, interstage adapter is a composite structure that connects the first stage with the second stage. It'll come back to Earth with the first stage. Inside that uh, interstage adapter sits the Merlin vacuum engine with its large vacuum optimized nozzle. And then above uh, that interstage adapter is the uh, second stage tankage. Again, with kerosene and liquid oxygen tanks uh, feeding that Merlin vacuum engine, uh, the second stage solid white in this view because it's a brand new element as it is for every Falcon 9 mission. It's the only major component of the Falcon 9 that is not reusable. Above that second stage is the payload fairing uh, comprising two clamshell halves. Inside that payload shroud is the 2.2 metric ton Cosmos SkyMed radar imaging satellite going to space tonight. Those. Uh, clamshell halves of the payload fairing. In this view, you can see some uh, subtle markings, some darkening. Those are also reused. Uh, each have flown on three pre uh, previous missions to space and have returned to uh, parachute into the ocean and been recovered by SpaceX for reuse. They will be, uh, all goes well, they will uh, also be recovered after tonight's mission by a SpaceX recovery team uh, 
down in the uh, sea south of Cape Canaveral. On uh, each side of the Falcon 9 rocket are the four lightning towers. Those uh, large uh, masts are uh, there to prevent lightning from uh, damaging or impacting the Falcon 9 while it's on the pad. They're connected by a, a catenary wiring system uh, above the Falcon 9 rocket. Again, these lightning protection masts are used to uh, protect the Falcon 9 while it's vertical on the launch pad from lightning, which is a common occurrence here in central Florida. Not an issue tonight, however, with clear skies overhead. Uh, here at the end of January, uh, a, a perfect evening for launch weather-wise tonight. Spacecraft is on internal power. Now, T minus 42 minutes and 26 seconds and counting. We just heard confirmation from SpaceX's launch team that the Italian Cosmos SkyMed second generation radar satellite has been switched to its internal battery power supply. This is a uh, final step to prepare that spacecraft for flight. It'll be operating on, on its own internal battery instead of ground power for the rest of the countdown. And will remain on battery power until it gets into orbit and separates from the Falcon 9 and deploys its solar panels shortly after arriving in space tonight. As you can see in this view of uh, Pad 40, the uh, Lower two thirds of the Falcon 9 uh, is comprised by the uh, first stage. It's showing its uh, uh, soot and scorch marks from its uh, two previous flights to space. It uh, previously flew as a side booster on two Falcon Heavy launches back in 2019 on April 11th, 2019, with the ArabSat 6A communication satellite, as well as uh, two months later in June 2019 on the STP 2 rideshare mission for the US military. On each of those missions, the uh, side boosters uh, returned to landing zone one and two at Cape Canaveral for uh, landing and refurbishment and reuse. This booster visible on the right side of this uh, triple panel is the booster out at pad 40 right now. It flew again as the port or left hand booster on those two Falcon Heavy launches back in 2019. SpaceX uh, modified it, uh, removed its nose cone, replaced that nose cone with an interstage adapter also uh, removed other hardware, such as the struts that are used to connect those three Falcon Heavy cores together. Uh, basically uh, recommissioned it as a Falcon 9 first stage booster. And that's the rocket you see out on launch pad 40 right now, 40 minutes and 32 seconds from liftoff. It's the first time that uh, a Falcon Heavy side booster has been converted into a Falcon 9 first stage. Those uh, booster stages are reconfigurable back and forth to fly in both configurations.
Now T minus uh, 39 minutes and 15 seconds. And launch go no go poles up free by at this time. T minus uh, 39 minutes now. We just heard from SpaceX's uh, launch conductor that the team is now being pulled for a go or no go to begin propellant loading. Again, as I mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago, this booster has flown to space on two previous missions on uh, two Falcon Heavy rockets. This view uh, from the uh, US uh, uh, Space Force taken back on April 11th, 2019, showing uh, this booster as well as, uh, as its uh, other side booster companion returning to the landing zone at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. There'll be a similar view tonight with uh, one booster returning to Earth with this rocket set to land down at landing zone one eight minutes after launch tonight. This booster uh, was uh, flown twice in 2019. It sat uh, dormant for a couple of years before SpaceX uh, refurbished it into a uh, Falcon 9 single stick core. Again, removing it, that nose cone and removing uh, some strut hardware used for connections on the Falcon Heavy. This view from our photographer, Michael Kane, taken back in December as the first stage uh, designated B-1052 in SpaceX's fleet. Uh, rolled by the Vehicle Assembly Building here at Kennedy Space Center on the way from SpaceX's uh, Hangar X processing facility out to the launch pad to get ready for tonight's launch. This view shows the Merlin engines on the left under that uh, protective tarp, as well as the uh, four landing legs there. Those landing legs are folded up for launch and will be unfolded just a few seconds prior to landing. Again, that landing expected at around eight minutes after liftoff tonight. That'll be a spectacular view for uh, spectators here on the Space Coast with the clear skies overhead. The landing uh, should come uh, be accompanied by uh, twin sonic booms that could be audible for uh, dozens of miles around. With these clear skies, it could make for a, a very beautiful view of the Falcon 9 a booster as it comes back to Earth. Count on that. Pulse complete and ready to proceed into propellant load and launch. Reminder on abort instructions. For non-urgent no-go conditions, brief CE or LD, enable approve aborting to countdown. For urgent issues affecting the safety of the operation, operators shall call hold, hold, hold on the countdown net. Launch control abort the launch auto sequence immediately and proceed to the launch abort auto. T minus 10 seconds launch control be hands off and relying on automated abort criteria for the remainder of the count. As we just heard, uh, the launch team is go for propellant launch loading. Auto sequence has started. And the launch auto sequence has begun. This uh, kicks off the steps to load kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants into the Falcon 9 rocket. You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 on pad 40. With the liftoff now less than 35 minutes away.
now less than a half hour from tonight's launch opportunity. As you can see, it's a golden hour here at Cape Canaveral. This view showing the Falcon 9 rocket live out on Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, this uh, vantage point around four miles away. You see those four uh, large lightning towers on each side of the Falcon 9 rocket. Those lightning towers providing protection of, of the uh, launch vehicle from uh, lightning strikes. Not a concern tonight with clear skies. Propellant loading is proceeding normally, we understand it at this point. Now T minus 28 minutes and counting. At this time, uh, super cold liquid oxygen is being pumped into stage one. That oxidizer is chilled to several hundred degrees below zero. At the same time, kerosene fuel is being loaded into both stages of the Falcon 9. That fuel is uh, densified also chilled uh, to near its uh, freezing point. This identification process uh, allows SpaceX to essentially cram more fuel into uh, the tanks on the Falcon 9 rocket, uh, expanding the uh, performance of the launch vehicle to uh, lift payloads into orbit. Also gives the rocket margin to uh, allow the first stage to come back to landing. Again, landing of the first stage booster is expected uh, to be back on shore tonight at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station around eight minutes after launch. So liftoff targeted for 6.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 23.11 UTC landing following eight minutes later at 6.19 p.m. Eastern Time. For those of you uh, keeping precise uh, notes, of uh, the launch time, liftoff is targeted for precisely 6.11 and 14 seconds p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So currently three of the four propellant tanks on board the Falcon 9 are being loaded. The only one uh, not being loaded right now is the liquid oxygen tank on the second stage. That begins loading at T minus 16 minutes. That'll be the final propellant tank to be filled tonight. All told, the Falcon 9 will be loaded with over a million pounds of liquid propellants to uh, power the rocket off the pad and into space with the Italian Cosmos SkyMed radar remote sensing satellite. Everything looking good right now for a launch this evening, 26 minutes from now.
now passing T minus 23 minutes and counting. Propellant loading is proceeding at this time. Kerosene and liquid oxygen continuing to flow into the Falcon 9 rocket out at pad 40. Tonight's mission will uh, mark the 138th launch of a Falcon 9 rocket since June of 2010 when the uh, very first version of the Falcon 9 made its deb debut from this same launch pad. It'll be the 146th flight of the uh, Falcon rocket family since the very first Falcon 1 launch uh, from Kwajalein Atoll back in 2006. It's also uh, the 79th Falcon 9 flight to depart from pad 40. This launch complex uh, has its uh, origins back in the 1960s at the beginning of the space age. It was the home of uh, various configurations of the Air Force Titan rocket family for uh, more than 30 years. Uh, numerous Titan rockets launched from here and uh, it was uh, converted into a Falcon 9 launch pad by SpaceX in preparation for the first Falcon 9 flight back in 2010. It'll be the uh, 82nd uh, flight of those 138 Falcon 9 missions to reuse a booster. It'll be the 80th uh, satellite built by Thales Alenia Space to fly on a SpaceX mission. Uh, most of those were the Iridium mobile communication satellites that launched in uh, groups of 10 on uh, Falcon 9 rockets a few years ago. It's the first SpaceX mission dedicated to the Italian Space Agency, and it's continuing a, a busy opening of 2022 for SpaceX. It'll be the fourth SpaceX Falcon 9 launch of the month, and it'll be the fifth orbital launch overall based out of Cape Canaveral this year, following uh, those three prior SpaceX missions and one flight by United Launch Alliance. Now, uh, just passing 21 minutes, in uh, less than a minute, we expect to see uh, the uh, a big vent uh, of uh, gaseous oxygen vapor from the strong back to the right side of the Falcon 9 rocket. This is normal. This is uh, indicating that the chill down procedure of those uh, plumbing of those liquid oxygen lines that feed the second stage is beginning. Uh, around the same time, we should hear confirmation that uh, kerosene fueling of the second stage is complete. So standing by to see that big vent uh, with that chill down procedure starting. And there's that big vent. The uh, gaseous oxygen vapor is now visible uh, coming just off the uh, strong back structure to the right of the Falcon 9 rocket. And we've heard confirmation from uh, SpaceX's launch team that the stage two RP-1 kerosene load is complete. So that means one of the four propellant tanks is now fully loaded. Kerosene continuing to flow into stage one and liquid oxygen flowing into stage one as well. And that chill down procedure uh, of the strong back lines for uh, stage two liquid oxygen loading now underway. Loading of that second stage uh, liquid oxygen tank begins in around three minutes or so.
page two locks loaded started. Now just past the T minus 16 minute point. Moments ago, uh, you heard confirmation from SpaceX's launch conductor that the stage two liquid oxygen loading process has started. This is the last of the four propellant tanks to be loaded this evening. The countdown uh, net is uh, pretty quiet tonight. No indication uh, of any technical concerns and no reports uh, thus far of any range uh, violations with the launch hazard area as was the case last night. The countdown uh, appears to be going smoothly. Liftoff with Italy's Cosmos SkyMed satellite set for 6.11 and 14 seconds p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's uh, 23.11 UTC. Everything looking good for a launch at that time at this point.
now uh, approaching T minus 10 minutes and counting. Everything looking good for launch this evening at 6.11 p.m. Eastern time with Italy's Cosmos SkyMed second generation satellite. Now less than eight minutes from uh, launch time. At uh, T minus seven minutes, the chill down procedure will begin on the first stage's Merlin main engines. This involves uh, thermally condition conditioning the Merlin engines for uh, their role in tonight's mission. Small amounts of uh, super cold liquid oxygen will be flowed into the uh, lines, propellant lines in the turbo machinery inside each of the Merlin engines at the base of the Falcon 9 rocket to begin uh, what's called a chill down. This chill down again thermally conditions uh, those components for flight tonight. That process uh, should begin at T minus seven minutes around 10 seconds from this moment. Everything looking good for launch this evening. No reports of any uh, technical issues. Weather is uh, fantastic for launch this evening with clear skies overhead. Should make for a, a spectacular view of the Falcon 9 climbing into space just after sunset. The uh, Falcon 9 booster will also be re returning to Cape Canaveral around eight minutes later. So an up and down view of the Falcon 9 should be uh, apparent to anyone on the Space Coast. That chill down procedure is now confirmed underway by SpaceX's launch conductor. Stage one, RP1 RP load is complete. The uh, first stage RP1 tank is now full. So that means uh, stage one and stage two have both received their full loads of uh, kerosene fuel this evening. Liquid oxygen loading into both stages will continue until around T minus two minutes. At that point, uh, the rocket will be uh, fully loaded with propellants, more than a million pounds of liquid propellants uh, we'll power the Falcon 9 off the pad tonight. But uh, that kerosene fuel, uh, 46,000 gallons of it, now fully loaded into the Falcon 9 rocket.
Now T minus five minutes and counting. In a few moments, you'll see the strong back structure on the right side of the Falcon 9 launch vehicle in this view. That uh, strong back structure will be retracted to a position about one and a half degrees from the Falcon 9's uh, skin. That is the holdback point for the uh, strong back structure up until ignition and liftoff. At that point, the strong back will begin a rapid retract to uh, clear the way for the Falcon 9 to climb off of the launch pad. Now, uh, T minus four minutes and 27 seconds. Those clamps are opening to allow that strong back structure to begin its uh, retraction. Strong back retract in progress. That strong back retraction is in progress. Now T minus three minutes and 30 seconds. In the past few minutes, the uh, Falcon 9 rocket's navigation system and guidance systems have been uh, verified in the proper configuration for flight this evening. The rocket's autonomous flight safety system, which would be used to destroy the vehicle if it uh, flew off course tonight, uh, should have also been verified ready for flight. Now approaching T minus three minutes and counting. In the next uh, minute or so, the stage final bit of liquid oxygen will be loaded into the rocket, and we just heard confirmation that the stage one liquid oxygen load is now complete. Stage two liquid oxygen will be secured momentarily. And you're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 on its launch pad as the countdown approaches the T-minus two-minute mark. Now T-minus two minutes. Stage two, locks load is complete. Now T minus 90 seconds. The Falcon 9 rocket is now fully loaded with more than a million pounds of liquid oxygen and kerosene. That propellant loading process has been uh, secured. At T minus 60 seconds, the Falcon 9 will be in startup mode. Its onboard computers will begin guiding the rocket through the final 60 seconds of the countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. Now T minus 50 seconds. We heard that startup call from SpaceX's launch conductor a few seconds ago. The Falcon 9 rocket's propellant tanks are now being uh, pressurized for flight. That ignition go of the launch. rolling engines is expected at T minus three seconds. And we just heard the final go from launch from SpaceX's launch director. T minus 30 seconds. Now T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus five seconds. Four, three, two, Ten, one. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, and ignition four, and liftoff three, of the Falcon 9 rocket two, carrying Italy's one, Cosmos SkyMed zero. radar ignition. satellite into orbit. And liftoff in Boca Alupo. Go Falcon, go Cosmo. Vehicle is pitching down range. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 climbing uh, into a clear sky about 10 minutes after sunset. Beautiful view of the rocket as it uh, heads south southeast with Italy's Cosmos SkyMed radar satellite. The uh, rumble now uh, passing over Power the space center. Phenomenal. The uh, rocket now about a minute into flight. Beautiful view as the Falcon 9 heads down range. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. Now approaching T plus one minute, 50 seconds. Falcon 9 continuing its uh, flight down range, Excellent. flying right. into sunlight now. Vehicles on a nominal trajectory. Have confirmation of main engine cutoff, stage separation, and ignition of stage, stage two. Stage separation confirmed. We expect to see that first stage. There it is, and beginning its boost back maneuver, coming back to Cape Canaveral. Stage one, boost back startup. Gorgeous view, high above Cape Canaveral. The uh, second stage uh, progressing down range with the Cosmos SkyMed radar satellite heading into polar orbit. The first stage beginning or nearing the end of its boost back burn. There is, looks like there was uh, just cut off of the boost back burn uh, approaching now. There's cut off of the uh, boost back burn. Cold gas thrusters now firing to uh, reorient the stage. Reorient the stage. Back, for its descent back to landing zone one. Bearing separation confirmed. We've heard confirmation of the uh, payload fairing separation now. Continuing to uh, see both vehicles, the uh, second stage continuing its flight down range and uh, stage one now almost directly overhead Cape Canaveral for its descent.
both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Stage one, entry burn startup. Now the uh, entry burn now underway for stage one. Three of its engines firing to uh, slow it down for landing. Stage one, entry burn shut down. Stage two FTS has saved. Stage one FTS has saved. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. And there is ignition for the landing burn. Stage one, Final descent sonic. underway toward landing zone one. Stage one, landing burn. Stage one, landing like deploy. Stage one, landing confirmed. And there you heard just uh, double sonic booms heralding the uh, Falcon 9 booster's arrival back at Cape Canaveral. We've heard confirmation Terminal from guidance. SpaceX that the landing was successful. The landing on landing zone one, around six miles south of the Falcon 9 booster starting point. The uh, second stage now in the final phase of its burn heading into uh, orbit. Go one. Nominal orbit insertion. Once again, we've uh, heard confirmation from SpaceX that the landing did occur successfully down on landing zone one, this booster completing its third trip to space. Uh, about a minute later, the SECO call, the second stage engine cutoff call, was heard over SpaceX's audio loops, indicating that the Falcon 9's upper stage did achieve a Expected LS orbit cape. with the Cosmos SkyMed second generation radar satellite. This uh, rocket will coast for another 45 minutes or so 
before a, a brief restart to circularize the satellite's orbit, setting up for deployment of that 2.2 metric ton spacecraft at T plus one hour. That deployment coming uh, at 7.11 p.m. or 12.11 a.m. UTC. Now approaching T plus 11 minutes, the uh, second stage of, uh, is flying over the Caribbean Sea, about to pass over Central America and head out over the Pacific Ocean. It'll be passing between the uh, west coast of Colombia in Peru and the Galapagos Islands, heading downrange toward the south over, uh, eventually flying over Antarctica and then back up on a northerly trajectory on the other side of the world to uh, set up for that restart of the uh, upper stage engine and stage or, or and uh, payload separation at T plus one hour.
now approaching T plus 19 minutes. Everything looking good on stage two as it coasts in orbit over the Pacific Ocean, uh, passing just off the west coast of South America, west of Peru. It'll track uh, south parallel to the uh, Chilean coast and then fly out, out over Antarctica before flying uh, north uh, bound over the eastern hemisphere uh, to set up for restart of that second stage engine. That second stage restart is expected at around 7.07 .07 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12.07 a.m. UTC, followed four minutes later by separation of the Cosmos SkyMed radar remote sensing spacecraft. With this uh, launch finally off the pad after its uh, fifth attempt, SpaceX will turn its attention to a pair of missions later this week. One of those missions is scheduled for liftoff from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, just a few miles to the north of Pad 40. The Falcon 9 rocket out there is a standing vertical already at this time for its launch attempt later this week. Uh, right now we're hearing the launch attempt is uh, scheduled for no earlier than tomorrow, although uh, that could change as SpaceX uh, fluctuates its schedule with uh, this mission being delayed several days, as well as uh, this Starlink mission out on pad 39A being uh, delayed in uh, response to the Cosmos SkyMed launch delays. Meanwhile, out at Vandenberg Space Force Base, the uh, SpaceX team out there is uh, preparing a Falcon 9 rocket for launch on Wednesday at 12.18 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3.18 p.m. Eastern, 2018 UTC, with a classified payload for the National Reconnaissance Office. That's the U.S. government's spy satellite agency. That uh, top secret payload will be launched into a polar, polar orbit from Vandenberg Space Force Base with a uh, brand new Falcon 9 rocket, brand new first stage booster. The uh, first stage on that mission will be returning to Vandenberg for a landing at landing zone four, uh, similar to what you just saw tonight here at Cape Canaveral, except uh, that mission will be occurring uh, during uh, midday hours. So two more SpaceX missions on tap this week with uh, tonight's launch from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station underway Attention now will turn uh, uh, following the uh, conclusion of tonight's mission to the remaining two missions from uh, Pad 39A with the uh, 49 Starlink Internet satellites and from uh, Slick 4 East, SpaceX's launch pad at Vandenberg with a classified National Reconnaissance Office payload. Very busy times for uh, SpaceX uh, this week. This was its fourth mission of the year with uh, missions number five and six in 2022, just around the corner.
expected acquisition of Signal, Punta Arenas. Expected loss of signal, Pontarenas. This is Stephen Clark, again, live from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. 
the SpaceX mission passing T plus 30 minutes, 30 minutes since we saw liftoff from pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The uh, upper stage is uh, coasting over the uh, Southern Ocean right now. It's uh, past south of Chile. It's about to head out over Antarctica and then head north over the Eastern Hemisphere to uh, set up for a restart of the second stage engine. That uh, restart will last for just three seconds. And that'll be followed at uh, T plus one hour or 7.07 .07 PM Eastern Standard Time by the separation of the Cosmos SkyMed second generation satellite. The clock you're seeing in the upper right is counting down to that milestone. That's the uh, critical separation event that will uh, tie the bow around tonight's mission and complete the Falcon 9 rockets uh, climb to space and the Falcon 9 rockets fourth flight of the year. Things aren't slowing down this week though with uh, two more Falcon 9 rockets expected to launch later this week. Out on pad 39A, a few miles to the north of pad 40 is a Falcon 9 rocket loaded with the next batch of Starlink internet satellites. You're looking at a live view right now of that rocket as a uh, night has fallen here at Cape Canaveral, Florida. This live view uh, looking out over the turn basin from the Kennedy Space Center uh, out over uh, out toward the east toward pad 39A where SpaceX rolled that uh, Falcon 9 rocket to the pad over the weekend to wait for a launch attempt. That mission has been pushed back a couple of times in response to the delays with uh, this Cosmos Skyman mission, which uh, got priority in SpaceX's launch schedule over the uh, company's own internal Starlink flight. That launch, uh, we believe, is tentatively scheduled for no earlier than tomorrow, although we are, we're, we're going to wait for a word from SpaceX to confirm the launch schedule for that Starlink flight. On uh, Wednesday, SpaceX is scheduled to launch another Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California from Space Launch Complex 4 East. That mission will carry a classified cargo or payload into orbit for the National Reconnaissance Office, which is the uh, U.S. government agency that uh, oversees the government's spy satellite fleet. Again, that payload is classified. It will be heading into a polar orbit from Vandenberg Space Force Base on a Falcon 9 Wednesday. That launch is scheduled for 12.18 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3.18 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that uh, converts to 2018 or 818 p.m. UTC for those of you in other time zones who wish to calculate the uh, time of the launch at your local time. Other launches expected later this month include the flight of uh, Astra's small satellite launch vehicle from uh, Space Launch Complex 46 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That mission will carry into orbit four uh, tiny CubeSat payloads for NASA and university students uh, across the United States. It's part of NASA's Adventure Class Launch Services Program, which uh, aims to uh, give NASA some uh, familiarity with some of these new commercial small satellite launch companies. Astra is one such emerging company. It uh, launched its first successful flight into low Earth orbit from Alaska back in November. This will be its uh, first flight from the Cape Canaveral spaceport. A launch date for that mission has not, has not been uh, announced or confirmed. Uh, it was originally expected uh, back in January or in January, today being the last month, uh, the last day of January, last day of the month. So uh, that mission has slipped to sometime in February, launch date pending. Uh, later in the month, we expect to see uh, launches from French Guiana with a Soyuz rocket uh, operated by Ariane Space, carrying the next batch of OneWeb internet satellites. This uh, mission expected to carry 34 OneWeb satellites into orbit from French Guiana, continuing the deployment of that internet constella constellation, a, a competitor to SpaceX's Starlink program. And then uh, scheduled for no earlier than February 14th is uh, the flight of a Rocket Lab Electron launch vehicle carrying two uh, Earth observation satellites for the company Black Sky, which is uh, based in Seattle. Those satellites will join Black Sky's fleet of small micro satellites collecting regularly updated optical imagery uh, of uh, the Earth's surface around the world. So those are the next uh, few launches uh, with confirmed uh, launch dates from uh, sites around the world.
again, you're looking live at uh, pad 39A where another Falcon 9 rocket remains on the, uh, on the ground tonight here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center awaiting its chance to fly later this week with the next batch of Starlink Internet satellites. At this time, the Falcon 9 rocket's upper stage with the Cosmos SkyMed uh, radar satellite for Italy is passing over Antarctica. Now approaching the T plus 36 minute point, around 20 minutes to go until restart of that upper stage and around 24 minutes and change until a separation of that Italian radar imaging satellite. So we uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, throughout the coast, we'll uh, bring you the live views of the upper stage as it restarts, uh, and then live views, hopefully, from the Falcon 9 rocket showing the deployment of the Cosmos SkyMed radar spacecraft.
now about 48 minutes since the Falcon 9 rocket blasted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The rocket uh, has passed over Antarctica and is now heading north out over the Indian Ocean, flying between South Africa and Australia. It'll soon be passing within range of a tracking station on the island of uh, Diego Garcia in the middle of the Indian Ocean. That will occur just around the time that the Falcon 9's upper stage engine is set to reignite. That reignition planned at T plus 56 minutes, around uh, a little under eight minutes from now. That burn will last just three seconds. The Merlin vacuum engine putting out uh, around 200,000 pounds of thrust for just a few seconds. That's enough impulse to maneuver the um, maneuver the upper stage into a near circular orbit at an altitude of uh, more than 300 miles. Once that burn is complete, the Falcon 9 will uh, fire some uh, thrusters to, to put itself in the correct attitude or orientation for separation of the Cosmos SkyMed radar satellite. That spacecraft on top of the Falcon 9's upper stage has a mass of around 2.2 metric tons. That's more than 4,800 pounds. It was uh, built by Talis Alenia Space in Europe. It's beginning a seven-year mission to survey Earth's surface and radar vision for the Italian military and the Italian Space Agency, collecting high-resolution high images that will be used for a variety of applications from uh, military maritime surveillance to climate change research to disaster response. It's joining a fleet of five prior Cosmos SkyMed satellites already in space. Four of those satellites launched from 2007 through 2010 on United Launch Alliance Delta II rockets from California. The first in this new generation of Cosmos SkyMed radar imaging satellites launched back in 2019 on a Russian-built Soyuz rocket marketed and operated by Ariane Space from French Guiana. There are two more Cosmos SkyMed satellites now being built in Europe by Talas Alenia Space, those slated for launch in the 2024 timeframe on European Vega rockets. Now less than 10 minutes from the moment of spacecraft separation, that's the key event left to go in tonight's mission, that along with the uh, upper stage re restart at T plus uh, 56 minutes. Now 51 minutes since liftoff, that burn five minutes away. We'll bring you live views, hopefully, from the Falcon 9 upper stage showing that Merlin vacuum engine restarting and then a forward looking view, uh, assuming the rocket is within ground station coverage that will show the CSG-2 or Cosmos SkyMed second generation number two spacecraft flying away from the rocket in space.
Acquisition of, acquisition of signal, Diego Garcia. And that engine chill is underway. Now less than two minutes from the restart of the second stage engine on the Falcon 9 rocket. This is an orbit circularization burn. You're watching a live view from space now of the Falcon 9 Merlin engine preparing for that ignition. That burn set to last just a few seconds to uh, put the Cosmos SkyMed satellite into the proper orbit for separation. We're going to hand off to uh, SpaceX's live webcast and SpaceX's live commentary now for this uh, restart. And uh, we'll hand we'll hand off to them now and let uh, SpaceX's commentator carry you through carry you through this restart and spacecraft separation, and we'll uh, rejoin you at the back end of that for a uh, wrap up and recap, hopefully after a successful spacecraft deployment. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the Cosmos SkyMed satellite for our customer, Talus Alenia Space. We've had a nominal mission so far. Falcon 9 launched on time at 6.11 p.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40. We successfully recovered the first stage back on land tonight, and that was the third land landing for this specific booster. While second stage completed its first burn, taking the Cosmos SkyMed satellite into an initial parking orbit. Now we're just a few seconds away from the second ignition of the MVAC engine carrying the second stage and Cosmos SkyMed into the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. MVAC startup. And shut down. And there we got a quick view. Just waiting for confirmation of good orbit here. Nominal payload deploy orbit. And great news, we just had SES-2 and SECO-2. It was a quick three second burn. We also got confirmation of a good orbital insertion. The Cosmos SkyMed satellite is still attached to Falcon 9 second stage and payload deployment is planned to occur around two plus one hour. And as a reminder, the mission today is for our customer, Talus Alenia Space, and the constellation is owned by the Italian Space Agency and Ministry of Defense. To help us better understand the capabilities of the Cosmos SkyMed constellation, here's an explanation from the Italian Space Agency's president and head of programs directorate. The Cosmos SkyMed second generation is a constellation of four satellites equipped with the synthetic aperture payload, able to acquire images in any part of the Earth's surface with an unprecedented resolution and image quality. The Cosmos SkyMed satellites, like the optical systems, are able to operate during the night and in presence of clouds. This is thanks to the specific frequency used for the acquisition. The antenna is uh, totally new and it is able to acquire uh, simultaneously images at a very big distance between them and the data acquired contain a lot of new information with respect to the past generation. 
for the better use of the satellites and the exploitation of data, we have developed a new control center and processing center in Italy. This will enable the development of new science and new services application for the benefit of citizens, institutions and entrepreneurs. Cosmos Ganymed is one of the very uh, important technical instruments in the field of Earth observation, but it's also an important uh, support to the strategy of Italy to international collaboration. Thanks to Cosmos Skymed over the years, and even more will be in the future with the enlargement of the constellation, we can establish uh, collaboration with other countries to share use of data provided by the constellation and to enlarge the coverage of the planet with other instruments offered by, by partners. I'm talking about so far, for example, Argentina, we plan in the future to do collaboration with Israel, and so on. Also very important is the fact that you use Cosmos SkyMed as third party contributor to the Copernicus uh, program of the European Space Agency and European Union. In this way, we offer important strategic and uh, precious data to collect with our constellation, also to other partners, to other producers of data for the benefit of Europe and, uh, and the rest of the world. If you're just now joining us, we had an on-time launch at 6.11 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by successful ascent, stage separation, first stage landing, and two second stage engine burns. Now, the booster that supported today's Cosmo SkyMed mission successfully landed for the third time back on land at landing zone one. And we have just one more major milestone coming up, and of course, that is the deployment of the Cosmo SkyMed payload from Falcon 9's second stage. And we're coming up on that in a few seconds here, and we've got a great live view. Payload deploy confirmed. Incredible view of the Cosmos SkyMed satellite drifting away from our Falcon 9 second stage. That is visual confirmation of payload deploy, and that will also bring our webcast to a close. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer, Talis Alenia Space, for entrusting us with today's mission for Italy's Space Agency and Ministry of Defense. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in. Have a great night, and we'll see you again soon. And there you have it. You just saw separation of the Cosmos SkyMed second generation flight model two spacecraft, CSG-2, now in orbit.
Hello again. I'm Stephen Clark reporting live from space uh, from a Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9's launch pad at Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The uh, launch of the Falcon 9 rocket occurred one hour and four minutes ago at 6.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 23.11 UTC. After four previous tries uh, did not result in a launch due to bad weather and a cruise ship in the downrange launch hazard area, everything came together for launch tonight with a successful liftoff with Italy's Cosmos SkyMed second generation radar satellite. This was uh, SpaceX's fourth Falcon 9 flight of the year, the fourth of the month, and uh, SpaceX will follow this up with two more Falcon 9s slated to take off later this week. Just a few miles to the north, I'm looking at, uh, you're looking at a live shot of pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center where a Falcon 9 is currently standing vertical on the pad for a launch opportunity later this week with uh, Starlink internet satellites on board. You can see a uh, NASA security helicopter currently doing a patrol over the uh, coastline near the launch pad right now. That Falcon 9 launch uh, scheduled later this week, uh, no earlier than tomorrow officially at this moment, although we'll wait for confirmation from SpaceX on uh, exactly when it plans to launch this mission. It's uh, shuffling these, two, uh, these next two Falcon 9 flights uh, one from uh, Pad 39A. There's another one scheduled for Wednesday afternoon from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California for the National Reconnaissance Office. The NRO is the U.S. government's spy satellite agency. It'll be carrying a classified payload into polar orbit for the NRO. So two more SpaceX missions on tap in the next couple of days. Uh, we know uh, the NRO mission is scheduled for Wednesday at 12.18 p.m. Pacific time or 3.18 p.m. Eastern Time from Vandenberg Space Force Base. And uh, we'll find out uh, soon, and we'll wait for word from SpaceX on where and when it plans to fit in the Starlink mission into its launch schedule this week. So we'll bring you both of those missions uh, live. We'll have live coverage of both. Uh, we'll have uh, live streaming coverage from uh, Kennedy Space Center when the Starlink mission takes off. We'll also have uh, live uh, uh, text updates and live uh, uh, live uh, web updates on our website and social media for the launch of the NRO L87 mission from Vandenberg on Wednesday. So we thank you for uh, joining us tonight for the successful flight of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, a successful launch, a successful landing of the first stage booster, and a successful deployment of Italy's Cosmos SkyMed radar imaging satellite into orbit. So until next time, I'm Stephen Clark from Space Flight Now reporting live from Kennedy Space Center. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.